Hello everyone, I'm Renzo Mayo. I know everyone has already talked about Tasha's Cauldron of Everything already, but me and my friends have been using this set of rules for a while, and I want to share some of the cool stuff you can find in this book if you haven't bought it yet. So here are 13 reasons why Tasha's Cauldron of Everything is cool as f in no particular order. Number 1. Class Adjustments Meet Campaign Tell me if this ever happened to you. You build a big, bad, fear-mongering barbarian that loves making their enemies piss their pants in combat, but as the campaign goes on, your heart softens a little and you realize that maybe talking to people to make them change their minds is more useful than intimidating them. Well, Tasha brings the ability to change your proficiencies during a campaign to better suit your character's development. This can happen at any moment at the DM's discretion, but is most recommended after an ability score improvement, symbolizing the effort your character has put to become proficient in this new skill while letting the old one atrophy. On the same vein, Tasha gives you a guide on how a character can change their subclass during a campaign. This usually is a big event on a character's journey, so it recommends for this to be a quest, to require long-term training, or be tied to an important event that shakes the character's core and beliefs. Number 2. The Artificer Class Finally, the definitive version of the Artificer is here. Do you like magic items? Having more magic items than the rest? Maybe creating magic items? Then this class is for you. One of the few classes that relies on the intelligence stat, the Artificer is a spellcaster able to fulfill almost any role in the party. Do you need a tank? Then let the Armorer Artificer grab their Guardian Armor and join the frontline. Do you need more damage output on your party? Sure, the Artillerist Artificer can do the job with his trusty and true Amy Eldritch Cannon. Do you maybe need some support for the other members of your party? Well, then the Alchemist Artificer will have you ready to fight with one of their experimental elixirs. On top of that, the Artificer is the only class able to manufacture their own magic items. Medium level artificers are able to bestow magical properties on mundane objects, weapons and armor with the use of magical infusions, while high level artificers are able to directly create magic items straight out of the Dungeon Master's Guide. The most amazing part? These items have no expiration time and the higher level the artificer, the more magic items they can create. Number 3. New Origin Rules we are used to seeing racial stats and proficiencies as pre-made qualities that are built into the playable races. Dwarves are more sturdy so they get a plus 2 in constitution and elves are more nimble so they get a plus 2 in dexterity. But you ever wondered why most NPCs have the option any race without taking into account set bonuses? According to Tasha, this is because racial bonuses are based on archetypes built upon years and years of adventurers of said races spending their formative years focusing their training on said attributes. By that same logic, any adventurer of any race can spend their training on any other ability that would better suit the class they are partaking in. Mechanically speaking, this would mean an artificer dwarf can focus their training on mechanical knowledge rather than physical resistance shifting their plus 2 in constitution to a plus 2 in intelligence. In this way, you can distribute your racial bonuses on the way that better suits you as a player. This particular rule sparked a lot of controversy when it came out, so before you go bash it over in the comment section, take into consideration, this rule allows you to shift only your stat attributes, not your racial features. This means that dwarfs keep their dwarf features and orcs keep their orc features. There are still pros and cons while choosing your character's race that influences over your role playing. This rule is based on the fact that you are customizing your cultural origin, not your racial aspects. In the same vein, you can customize your known languages and skill proficiencies to better suit your needs, all according to this little table of proficiency shiftings. Number 4. Resources for Environmental Hazards during their travels, adventurers visit great and fascinating places. Sometimes just describing a place as magical is not enough, you need to show how that magic can affect the people in there. So Tasha brings a series of resources and ideas to help DMs flesh out the environments in their world. There are three kinds of environmental hazards. 
First come natural hazards, the closest to reality and difficulties players may find while traversing natural geography. Second come magical phenomena, which are natural wonders or places that have been altered in some way by the effects of magic. Third, but not least, come the supernatural regions, regions of the material plane that have bridges to other planes of existence and are permanently influenced by said forces. Each environmental hazard comes with mechanical guides and random effect tables to keep your players at the edge of their seats. Number 5. Parlaying with monsters. Just like not every fight has to end with the death of the enemy, not every monster encounter has to end with the players fighting them. Tasha brings a handful of guides so DMs can play a negotiation between two parts of a conflict. This section contains a table of monster research, which describes what skill would be necessary to negotiate with a creature and a table of possible offerings the players can give in order to parlay with each type of creature. Number 6. New Magic Items Ok, who says the artificer is the only one who can have fun with magic items? I want magic items too! We have been good boys and girls this year, right? Right? Yeah, we deserve more magic items! Well, since Tasha is such a cool person, she brings 47 new magic items for you and me. One of the highlights in this list is the definitive version of the magical tattoos we saw a while ago in Anerda Arcana. Magical ink engraved on the skin of a creature that grants them a variety of abilities, from bonuses to armor and damage resistances, to the ability to absorb the life energy of your enemies and heal yourself after every attack. Included in this book are also amazing artifacts like Baba Yaga's Mortar and Pestle, literally the mortar and pestle the mother of all witches uses to travel from one corner of the realm to the other. There's also the Crook of Rao, a tool created by the god Rao in order to fight the evil of the lower planes, and the Demonomicon of Igwilf, a powerful tome that houses an extract of the abyss itself, bringing dark knowledge to its user but also powerful dangers. Number 7. Puzzles Guide Some people use monsters to protect treasure, others use traps, but some people are fucking assholes so they use puzzles. But puzzles don't need to be a drag for you or your players, they can actually be pretty fun. Tasha includes a guide on how to achieve this and a list of example puzzles you can use on your games. Every puzzle comes with a narration box of info that players will know when encountering the puzzle, an overview of the puzzle's features, a solution to the puzzles, a list of hints players can find on how to solve the puzzle, and recommendations on how to customize the puzzle's difficulty. You can find classic puzzles like the floor with trapper tiles and the haunted treasure, plus brand new ones like the wizard's hidden scroll and the password for the hidden criminal hideout. Number 8. New spells. When it comes to spells, more is always better, and, like with almost every expansion, Tasha brings 21 new spells for all classes. You can find spells like the revised version of Booming Blade that now has a range of self rather than 5 feet, the summoning branch of spells that allow you to summon fey elementals and other creatures, and brand new spells like Man's Liver, a cantrip that attacks enemies directly on their minds, Tasha's Caustic Brew, a spell that emulates the acidic breath weapon of a black dragonborn, and Blade of Disaster, a spell that creates a huge blade-shaped planar rift and allows you to wield it like a weapon against your enemies. As a bonus, Tasha includes a little guide on how to personalize your spells. Even though personalizing a spell has no mechanical effect on it, it's the perfect way to show the personality of your character, by showing how they perform the casting and in what color, shape and movement said spell manifests. Number 9. Optional class features. Having determined proficiencies and knowing spells is cool, but what I think makes a class what it is are their features, in other words, the special abilities that differentiate them from one another but at certain levels they feel like they could use an extra punch, right? So Tasha gives optional features for every class. Some of these features are, for example, the Barbarian's Instinctive Pounce, that allows them extra movement when raging, and the Druid's Wild Companion, that allows them to summon a familiar like the Find Familiar spell. 
But wait, there's more! Some classes, like the Bard and the Fighter, have versatility features that allows them to replace skills and class choices made at past levels in order to better suit their current needs. But wait, there's even more! All classes have expanded spell lists that include spells from the core books, senators and even from Tasha's. But wait, there's even, even more! The Warlock has a new Pact option, the Pact of the Talisman, which comes with their own new array of Eldritch invocations. But wait, there's… Uh, I think you get the idea. There's tons of new content. Number 10. New Feats If you're like me and have already capped your main stat at level 4, then all the upcoming ability increases are not gonna be that useful. Yes, you can balance your stats, patch it here and there, fix some broken crannies… But where's the fun in that? I need something more exciting, something more spicy… That's where feats make their appearance. In Tasha's you can find feats like Eldritch Adept and Fighting Initiate, that let you take dips in the Warlock and Fighter subclasses without multiclassing. There are also feats like Piercer and Crusher, that lets you up your damage output with determined kinds of weapons. And also feats like Telekinetic and Telepathic, that give you some psionic abilities for multiple purposes. Number 11. Patron's Rules Ok, here's one for the DMs. Have you ever wondered how to make your players join an allegiance besides offering them money? Or which benefits will they get after striking a job with that important noble? Then this set of rules are just for you. Patrons are not only the owners. <coughs> <coughs> sorry, sorry. I mean benefactors of warlocks. Patrons are any individual or organization under whom a player or the whole party works on a regular basis. Tasha brings eight different types of patrons. Every type of patron comes with a list of possible patron subtypes, the perks and benefits of working under said patron, the contacts between the players and the patron, a list of possible roles the players may fulfill for the patron, and a table of suggested quests the patron may need from the players. Number 12. Sidekicks it seems like people at Wizards of the Coast don't like you watching your adopted children die during a game, so Tasha brings rules for that now. Sidekicks are people, animals or creatures of low CR level that are able to join a party in their travels and level up with them, providing useful help in their adventures. There are three types of sidekicks. Experts, who specialize in certain tasks or jobs. Spellcasters, who specialize in the use of magic and warriors who specialize in combat. Experts are supports during combat and exploration, fulfilling the role of the rogue or ranger of the team. Spellcasters fulfill different roles depending on the type of caster they are. Healers are support casters fulfilling the role of cleric or druid. Mages are arcane casters that fulfill the role of a wizard. And prodigies are utility casters that fulfill the role of a bard or a warlock. Finally, fighters are specialized in combat without depending on another player fulfilling the role of the fighter of the party. Number 13. Because it's cool. What? Not every reason needs to be complicated, I just think it's neat. And those are the 12 reasons why I think Tasha's Cauldron of Everything is a great expansion for Dungeons and Dragons. Thank you so much for watching the video. I know it's been a while since the last video, so a big, 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 big thank you to everyone who stayed until the end. Thanks so much for all the views and comments you leave on my videos. I know I don't respond to everyone, but I assure you I take the time to read every single one of you. If you want to keep supporting my channel, don't forget to leave a like, click on the subscribe button and ring on the bell so you don't miss any new video in the future. Tell me in the comments if you have already bought Tashans and what are your thoughts or if maybe this video helped you decide. And that's it, I'll see you in the next video, bye bye!